Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for coming by to our budget meeting for 2020 2021. Um, first, I'd like to introduce some of our, our staff here. Uh, Dr. Mark, uh, he is Dr. Mark Brown, our city manager. Catherine Hayward, and we have uh, Councilman Davis is back here also. We have our assistant city managers, Mr. Brian James and Charles County. Thanks for, for coming out. Uh, we're going to show you exactly uh, where our funds are going, what with our expenditures, and um, and at the end, if you have any questions, uh, we'll open up the floor so you can ask any questions you may have. I'll turn the mic over to Dr. Brown. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so yes, we're, uh, we're pleased to be able to present the budget to you this evening. Um, uh, the staff's worked very hard to uh, prepare this budget. It's, uh, I think it reflects um, the, the priorities of the city in terms of spending, not only for this year, but moving forward in the next few years. So we, uh, you know, when we uh, create a budget, we don't just look at the, at the next year. We look at the impact of our, of our funding over a five-year period. So we really try to take into consideration um, the impacts of our spending moving forward so that we're not caught by surprise. In, in the succeeding years. Um, also, so we, we sort of took a strategic view with this budget looking out um, beyond the immediate future in terms of our infrastructure, um, our, our parks, our facilities, um, and, and generally just trying to project where we want to spend our money and where, where we want to focus our, our, our priorities in the future. So I think you'll see that in this budget. We, we really worked hard uh, to do that. So. It's a it's a good budget. It's um, it's it's a balanced budget, so we're not we're not spending in the deficit at all. Um, but we are being so we are being fiscally responsible. I think with your with your uh, tax dollars. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to James Walters in just a minute. Um, but I want to thank James for his hard work that he did on the budget and our, and our staff as well. Uh, they, they put in a tremendous number of hours to um, to work on the budget. And I also appreciate the input from our city council. Uh, I want to thank them for um, giving us guidance and uh, helping us. So we, we work it as a team. It, it's a team effort between council and staff. And of course, we want your input as well. We're, we're interested in what our citizens think of our budget. And uh, that's, that's an important piece for us as we look to, to finalize it in the next month or so. So without further ado, turn it over to James Walters. All right, good evening, everybody. My name is James Walters. I'm the finance director here for the city of Shirts. I'm going to start off by saying, you know, thank you for everyone who wanted to come out and be here with us for our live budget meeting. This will be the only budget meeting, uh, community budget meeting we'll have uh, this year. Normally we have three, try to pull it around different parts of the city, make it easier for uh, folks who can come out and do that. Um, but this year, again, thank you for everyone coming out. And I also want to say thank you to everyone that's watching from home or uh, any video uh, after this is over uh, from home. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time and looking at this and, and providing your feedback and your thoughts on what we've done here today. Um, tonight we're going to touch on the highlights of the budget. We're going to kick off uh, uh, with a, a COVID-19 update. Uh, there are some fiscal implications for that with the City of Shirts. We'll touch on those as well give you a status update of what we're seeing in the area. Um, we'll touch on the highlights of the budget as well as some of the projects that we've completed this year and that are currently ongoing. I'll go on the general fund summary. So the general fund is normal city operations. That's the fire, that's PD, uh, that's our internal services like IT and finance and HR. It's our municipal court, it's our building inspections. Um, touch on the water and sewer projects real quickly, what we can see upcoming in, in that area. Uh, we'll look at the Sheridan Economic Development Corporation summary and then look at the tax rate and what that's doing next year. So to start off, I'm gonna hand it over to our uh, fire chief and uh, for a COVID-19 update. Well, good evening, I'm Cade Law and I'm the fire chief. And I just wanted to give a quick update on the numbers. So again, um, we've tried to keep everybody informed of what our numbers are doing in our area and around us. And so they uh, continued um, to, make positive strides around us pretty close. So 1886 is our new number today, but 1811 are recovered. So uh, 
hundred, I think it was 264. Now 164 pending, so 240 active cases right now. So we've tried to shift over to showing uh, how many cases are active instead of just uh, how many cases we've had total um, as we continue to get uh, more um, off of the pending and uh, confirmed list each day um, or off the active list. So shirts, again, we're, we're sitting at 223 total, but 172 recovered. And we're sitting at 50 active cases um, now. Uh, Bear County uh, is starting to see smaller increases, but um, you know they're, they've been showing 68, 41 active cases out of the 43,000 that they had. Uh, Camel County has uh, got 471 active, and so um, those kind of change right now within about 30 or 40. A day is kind of what we've been seeing on those so that's smaller increases and uh, but we're still getting recovered each day as well so that's offsetting some of those numbers so that's been encouraging dishes region 8 is um, our health authority for Guadalupe County and uh, the county's all the way down to Victoria so um, that does not include Bear or Comel County and so they're setting at 19,000 um, for the whole region, um, so up just about a thousand from last week. The positivity rate is something else we've just been trying to look at as the state um, continues to um, post that each week. So it would show that the, the rate went up today a little bit to about 24 percent um, for the state, but. Guadalupe counties is still staying around 14.2% um, at this time. So we've stayed under that a little bit. Um, the state's number a month ago was 13%, and it's went, you know, like I said today, uh, up just under 25% um, at this point. Okay, we can so we'll take a quick pause. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Had a technical error, the system decided to reboot itself. And so as soon as it's done, it's coming back online now, we'll get it signed back in and get, keep going with our presentation. Uh, the number, don't worry. You can go ahead and go over the next slide. Uh, <laughs> that was the chart? No. It's a chart, so yeah. yeah. It's so very visual. The next chart is at least showing a downward trend. <laughs> Which is a good thing. Yes. But we have uh, a little more time for the computer to get back on its feet, but until it does that, um, I do, I can, I can talk about, we're going to do a song and dance routine. <laughs> um, you want to do a duo? <laughs> I think, yeah, with like Chief Hansen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> really um, but <laughs> I can tell you that I, I know some of what's coming on the next slide. The next couple of slides, uh, I can talk about the, the fiscal impact of the COVID that we've seen as far as city operations. Uh, so on one hand, we're seeing some less expenditures come our way. Um, 
all the city training has been canceled, sort of thing, all the conferences we go to, there's quite a bit of savings there. Uh, we had some savings as far as vehicle fuel. Now uh, we had, you know, when no one was on the road driving, especially during those first couple months, vehicle fuel prices took a huge drop. Uh, so we had less uh, staff was driving around, and plus we had less or lower rates. Um, we had those as well. And then sadly, we did cancel some of our events in the city. Uh, we're moving on main event. Uh, was first pushed back and then at least delayed until next fiscal year. Uh, so we had some expense savings. Almost there. Uh, but uh, sadly, we also had some loss of revenue as well. Um, some of the main ones are in our facility rentals. So the Civic Center facility, uh, community center, park pavilions. We also saw some decreased revenue as far as um, municipal court fines. You know, if everyone's staying home, there's less people on the road, less traffic citations, and ultimately results in um, less uh, municipal court fines. Uh, finally, some of the, the last really large notable decrease we've had is in our investment income. Uh, we've lost probably about half of our investment income in the general fund. Uh, totally about $200,000, uh, so it's quite a bit. Our investment return closely mirrors the federal funds rate, and the Fed, in order to help stimulate the economy in this um, pandemic, lowered their rate to near zero. So basically the same level it was during the last recession. Um, it took a little bit of time for the market return to catch up to that, but uh, we're very close to that now. So we're getting the same sort of return we've got back in the last recession. So we were going from almost $500,000 um, in investment income and next year we're projecting closer to $200,000 uh, just for the general funds. So we've lost quite a bit there. Um, overall, there is a negative impact um, as far as the direct result of COVID. Um, however, there is some positive. Uh, you think maybe sales tax would be negative, negatively affected. Uh, however, for the city of Shirts, that happened not to be the case. Our sales taxes are at a record high. Uh, which is really pulling us out of making up some of those other lost revenues. Um, so we're really lucky with the, sort of the type of large businesses we have in the city, the real big sales tax generators. Uh, you've been to HEB, you've been to Walmart, you've been to Lowe's. All of those places are still open, still doing fantastic business. Probably too much business if you don't like going there like I do. Uh, we've also seen, uh, or we also have a uh, lament the fact we don't have a lot of nice like sit-down restaurants or steakhouses. Um, we have too many drive-through chicken places. We have too, much, too many drive-through Mexican food places. Um, but all of those restaurants are still open, and the lines were out in the street and beyond. Um, so all of those factors kind of help the city keep a strong sales tax base. We've even seen it grow over this time period. Um, so the sales tax kind of helped made up for the other lost revenue directly related to COVID. Um, so overall this year, we're actually in a spot where we'll do um, sort of what we thought we'd do, perhaps a little bit better as far as our, our financial projections are concerned. Um, so that's really good for the city. I know not all businesses are in the same sort of situation. They're not all like uh, Walmart or H-E-B or Lowe's help doing that really high volume business right now. So um, luckily, as far as the city's concerned, uh, we're doing pretty good. 94% almost there. Um, then we'll, as soon as it gets back up, we'll kind of roll into some of the budget highlights as well as uh, projects that are going on throughout the city. And if your masks are too restrictive while you're sitting down, uh, please okay if you want to take them off. Uh, but if you get up and move around, uh, please put them back on. City make money locally off of online purchases. People, you know, stuck at home, and and I guess do do the companies have to pay the local sales tax? You know that they make purchases from online. Yeah. So the question was, uh, does the city still collect sales taxes on online purchases? And the answer is yes. Uh, as long as the merchandise is being delivered or shipped here, 
uh, businesses are required to collect local sales tax are admitted to us. Uh, so that's not always been the case, but it is now. So we have seen a jump in sales tax from online sales as well. Uh, so people are, some areas are going down, but online sales are up and we do still get a percentage of those sales taxes. But that's not true for Amazon. We do, we don't get all, like the Amazon facility, we don't get all of the sales out of that facility. All the sales tax generated by that facility. But all the Amazon deliveries to shirts homes, we get sales tax on those. Anybody else? Yes. Is franchise free, free, yeah, fees, different. <laughs> I'm just drinking water. Uh, <laughs> franchise fees, different from the sales tax, or are they just combined together? Like for a cable and for like you charge on water and you charge whatever comes through. So the question was, uh, are the franchise fees uh, different than the sales taxes and do we collect both? And we actually do collect both, they are different. So if you have a franchise fee, let's say on your utility bill, uh, electric utility for instance, um, that is collected by the utility provider and then sent and paid to the city. Um, your sales taxes are also generated on that and they're also remitted to the city. Uh, now we have franchise agreements with utilities and those franchise agreements basically say the utilities will pay us a franchise fee based on their gross revenue and in return they get to use all of the city's right of way basically without pulling uh, permit fees or they don't have to let's say, not really tell us when they're going on and making improvements uh, so like all of the uh, power lines uh, let's say if we didn't have a water sewer system all the water lines all of those would go or most of those would go through city property the city right of way, that area the city has access to on the next to the roads. And if we didn't have a franchise agreement with them, they have to pay us to get access to their lines in the right of way every time they wanted to go out. Um, so in lieu of those individual payments, we usually set up franchise agreements. But those, uh, we don't determine the rates, right? The rates are uh, determined in the contract. So we negotiate a rate with uh, utilities. So you may see a different franchise rate depending on where you go. Um, uh, GBC just, uh, last time we negotiated with GBC, they increased the franchise fee, I believe, two to three percent. Um, but like CPS pays four and a quarter, or four and a half percent. But like for AT&T, those rates, we, we don't negotiate those rates, do we? Uh, for AT&T and the cable franchise. That's good, that determined by the yeah, the cable franchises are, are determined um, at the state level. They have a maximum of 5%, and the city has adopted the 5% maximum. Uh, they actually pay a peg fee, which is a 1% additional, and that goes into our uh, public access uh, uh, fund. And we're back. Shot that shows Guadalupe and Comal County is just what what we were doing back in uh, early July and the middle of July, and how we've taken that downward trend now uh, for both uh, both Guadalupe and Comal County. Um, so that's that's encouraging and uh, continuing to hopefully make that little drop to where Comal County kind of leveled off. And then this, just a quick um, fatality ratio here to show um, kind of where we've been um, since, you know, mid-June. So basically just showing that we've kind of climbed and, and uh, we had some deaths around Guadalupe County. So right now we're showing about 55 uh, deaths for the county. And so based on all the cases that we've had that's about 2.86 percent fatality rate is what we're showing right now that's all i've got oh yeah the, the hospitalizations is something else we've continued to talk about so early july there was about 1250 people or so with covid in bear county hospitals 
And today it's continued over the past seven days to go down a little bit each day. And today that continued, it, it went down to like 690 now. Um, so that's, that's been a good trend to continue that we keep seeing those hospitalization numbers go down. So that's where we're at. Okay, and this is what I was uh, mentioning before during our uh, brief intermission. Uh, sort of the expense savings, about 160000 but we've lost revenues of almost 400000 um, So net impact, you know, COVID is affecting the city. Uh, however, we are seeing sales tax up, and it's offsetting uh, that overall decrease. So very happy that we're able to, to bring those in and maintain that. You know, not all communities are in the same situation. Uh, anyone with more traditional retail, uh, like clothing stores or a lot of the cities around the Forum, you know, the Forum wasn't generating much sales taxes, uh, especially early on. Uh, so that could really negatively affect those communities. All right, so for the budget highlights, what we've actually uh, submitted to council for their consideration, uh, we're gonna update our comprehensive land use plan and unified development code. That doesn't sound super exciting, but I guarantee you it's very, very important. Um, uh, we're also gonna show, uh, put some more money to our CIP funding. We put some more money to our facilities maintenance. Uh, we put some funds towards uh, classification and compensation implementation and the employment cost index. Go over that in a little bit more detail. And then funding the personnel recommended by a staffing study we did. So we had a company come out and recommend uh, how much staff we should have given our level of standards as well as our population and other factors as well. All right, for the comprehensive land use plan, uh, it's going to include the future land use plan, the parks master plan, and any sub elements we desire, maybe some housing education. Uh, we'll also look uh, at implications to the master thoroughfare plan and the water and sewer master plan. So basically this document is going to lay out for the city what we want to look at, or what we want to look like at build out. It's going to take into a lot of different factors um, and it'll change a lot of our regulations um, uh, to help us grow and, and develop in the right way. Um, we need to have this updated every so often to make sure uh, we are reacting to the current environment and any change as far as our population or uh, needs as a community. Uh, it's been a while since we last updated it, so this is gonna be one big comprehensive update. So make all of our different plans kind of mesh together. Um, we're also gonna put funding towards our uh, capital improvements plans, uh, about $500,000. It's gonna be a one-time amount um, out of our bank account. We'll put towards streets, uh, 200,000, parks, 150,000, uh, drainage, 100,000, and spike walks, 150,000. This is one time in addition to what we have reoccurring in the budget. So I'm gonna to touch on some projects we've actually completed this year that are ongoing still and what's gonna come up next year with some of the funds we've seen. Uh, so streets, you may have noticed we have a lot of street projects all throughout the city. It feels like almost the entire shirts is under construction at some point. Uh, you think you're out of it and then pop back into it on 3009 or Shirts Parkway or maybe in one of your neighborhoods as you're going home. Uh, but we did some work in North Cliff, some curb and gutter replacement, uh, Greenville Village, uh, chip seals so like the new surface on the road. Uh, portions of Randolph and Curtis. Portions of Randolph actually got reconstructed. And this is just a real, uh, just an overlay. Uh, Deer Haven, uh, Lone Oak, the estates at Wilson's Preserve, Tri County Parkway uh, was reconstructed. Um, just the 35 and quarter Parkway. Uh, those sections. So these were all completed projects. We do still have some ongoing, you know, Shirts Parkway. I'm not sure if you noticed, that was still under construction. Uh, they've had some delays, but they're, uh, looks like I saw them out there today, so they're getting back to it. Uh, Live Oak is gonna get some more uh, construction, some curb gutter and sidewalk construction uh, here pretty soon. Uh, Shirts Parkway, Live Oak, the back, uh, we're planning to have that done by the end of August, and looks like they're making some good improvements on that area as well. Uh, Cherry Tree, uh, we have a September start date for that for uh, road repair and sidewalk improvements. Next year, uh, we'll have work on the Elbel storm drain. Oh, so this year's still ongoing, I apologize. They're gonna roll into next year, but they're already underway. So the Elbel storm drain, that's in design. Construction's gonna start in 2021. It's about $1.2 million there. Um, we have a 2020 resurfacing projects, all in design. 
uh, hopefully to finish design at the end of September. That'll be Action Place, Aviation Heights, Dove Meadows, Silver Tree, Fairways and Scenic Hills, Mesa Oaks, Oak Forest, Parkland Village, Savannah Square, Shirt Sports, Alberti, and Westland Park. Uh, construction estimated approximately like $2.2 million, and that will kick off for this next fiscal year. So design's working right now, and then we'll kick off for bid and construction. Uh, this won't all be reconstruction. It's not going to be all the streets in these areas, but they're going to be like the worst areas. Uh, now we're going to touch on each of these neighborhoods. Uh, we're also going to see more construction on Tri-County. We're going to finish it off uh, where we ended the first round, and we're going to continue that from that area all the way to 3009. Uh, it's going to take a long project. Uh, probably won't be completed until two years away. As far as new projects that we haven't started yet, uh, we're going to update our PCI index. Uh, that's a study that we do to look at all the roads in the city and see how good or bad they are. Uh, so they're going to tell us the condition of all of our roads in the city and that will help us prioritize which roads are going to be next as far as repair and fixing. Uh, we have a contribution to FM uh, 3009 and 78 crossing. So TxDOT is looking into a study. We're going to help contribute to that to see what can be done to get cars from uh, 3009 on to 78 somehow going around and above the railroad track. So that's not held up anymore. Um, so, so while well, studies being done now, I wouldn't expect any sort of construction or any action on it for quite a few more years, uh, but know that there's some progress being looked at. Uh, next is Lindbergh, uh, from Main Street to Exchange, a reconstruction of storm drain, be about 720000 to a million dollars. Uh, that's the project that will be starting to get kicked off as well. All right, we're going to talk about parks. So some of the parks we, uh, projects we completed this year, we had the Welcome to Shirt sign at the end of Shirt Parkway and uh, the 35. Uh, Pickerel Park slide replacement. Uh, we also had some uh, painting and basketball goals over Pickerel Park. Uh, Fire Station 3, got planning and the memorial sign. Heritage Oaks, Playscape and Trail. Veterans Memorial Paper replacement. Um, that, was, that was a very good project. Uh, Ashley Park uh, Court and ADA restroom retrofits. Uh, the Johnny McDowell Sports Complex uh, limestone block was, uh, blocks were placed to help prevent cars from parking on top of our irrigation systems and breaking those. Uh, and then Hilltop Park Conceptual Plan, all of those were completed this year. Uh, ongoing, uh, Kuhlmeyer Park Phase 2, uh, Ashley Park Walking Trail, uh, Pickerel Park Picking Tables, the McDowell Sports Complex Painting and Planting, uh, Senior Center Parking Lot uh, is going to be redone as well. Uh, water fountain replacement uh, throughout the city, and then Crescent Bend Pavilion uh, update as well. So all of those are currently in, in process and ongoing. Uh, so next year, uh, we're going to take some of the 150000 from our reserves and add it to what we have uh, currently. Uh, we're going to look at Gumar Park. We're going to additional pay, uh, parking as well kind of pave that dirt, uh, dirt parking lot that's there now. Uh, Ashley Park Pavilion and Playscape. We're going to finish out our work over at Ashley Park. It's been a multi-year kind of phase in to update that park. Uh, lots more Pickle Park improvements and then a north trail uh, section to help improve our trails up in the northeast. Uh, so this is the parks trails map. So you can see some of the parks we're looking at. Uh, the Great North Trail. It's going to be through here. Oh, the Parkway Trail proposed is the dotted line. So some of the work is going to be in here. Let's touch on some drainage projects. So we have the Colonies Ditch. Uh, those are ongoing. Uh, this is on by Shirts Parkway. It's been awarded uh, this month. Castle Hills and Osage uh, also will be awarded in this next package. And this is kind of where those projects are. We've got Castle Hills, we got Osage, and then uh, Colony Drive and Shirts Parkway. Just right down the road from here. Um, ongoing projects as well. Uh, we have Schwab Road that was actually completed in July. Uh, Schaefer Road, uh, award date in September. Uh, Dover Lane, award date in September. Fire Station 2, also another award. So there's going to be another round of drainage projects coming through. Uh, these are projects you don't really see very much uh, as far as on a normal day. You really see these projects take effect when we get a lot of rain. Um, so. These areas could have um, either some minor flooding 
onto the roads uh, whenever it rains and causes uh, issues for cars traveling uh, next to these areas. Um, but one of the biggest uh, pluses for our drainage uh, program is when we get another flood like we had in the early uh, 98, 2000, uh, proper drainage channels can help mitigate the damages we see during those events. Uh, these collect water and, and take them away from the city, um, helping preserve our homes and our roads. What is riprap? Oh, my question is, what is riprap? Uh, so riprap, I've, uh, there's a couple of kinds, but uh, I believe the one we're talking about here is when they have the large pile of rocks kind of wrapped in the chicken wire. Uh, those help hold the banks of the uh, drainage channel, prevent erosion. Sometimes we, we might throw these out and like, we, we, do, we, we do these all the time. And, uh, but uh, yeah, riff rap is when you see, if you look down at the drainage ditch and you see like a lot of rocks all muddled together, yeah. um, that's what a riff rap is and that helps maintain the drainage channel. Didn't know I had an official name. Rocks. <laughs> rocks. Rocks. So we have uh, the projects that we talked about Shop Road, Fire Station 2, Door Lane, and then uh, Shaker Road. So the final areas of the ongoing drainage projects, we have Westchester, Royal Verity, Savannah. So a lot of uh, desilting is another one we have. That's when in the big drainage channels, when they're doing their job, they collect rainwater and move them out of the city. Well, they also, uh, the white water also collects uh, dirt and sediment and then deposits them into the channel whenever they do the runoff. Uh, so every now and then we have to go and scoop out all that extra dirt that's been piling up in there. Um, otherwise, the drainage ditch won't be able to handle as much water as it's designed to. And so for those projects upcoming, we have a Royal Verity and in Forsyth and Brayton and then the Westchester. So we have a lot of drainage projects all throughout the city. Uh, new project coming next year, um, we have about 183,000 we're going to kick off with. We're going to work on the drainage channel by the Amazon facility. Uh, overall, we're asking that be about 300,000. We'll probably take some from our uh, reserves, uh, which is kind of like our bank account, uh, to help complete that project. Okay. Do sidewalks, and then uh, I'll take a break and see if there's other kind of questions about any of these projects. So, sidewalks, then we have uh, Columbia. These are completed Columbia, Light Green, Westchester. All these were new sidewalks and repairs. Westchester was highly asked for. Uh, ongoing projects. Uh, we're continuing the Westchester uh, down a little further and Curtis Avenue. Westchester Surf Parkway and then Curtis Avenue Surf Parkway to Beacon. And especially these projects that are currently ongoing is going to look real nice when they're all done. I'm not sure that. Uh, and then Curtis Avenue, uh, Beacon, that's what we just mentioned. And then Arrow to Surf Parkway and uh, update those sidewalks. Uh, with the new money next year as a new project. And if you can see here, uh, this is the, the Westchester, so we're adding a sidewalk here, and this is Curtis, and then when we're done, it's gonna be all the way up here from basically the school, so you go down, all the way down to Curtis, all the way to Main Street. So we'll have a nice, uh, good sidewalk trail all the way to Main Street, and this is the Arrow uh, update. We'll have a nice trail system through, or a nice sidewalk system through this whole area. Uh, should help a lot of people walk and, and get to that downtown Main Street um, area from this whole area. Uh, area. All right. Um, is there any questions over the sort of sidewalks, the drainage? Yes. Change on the storm drains on Lindbergh, Main to Exchange, and then you've got Westchester. And one other area. After that's done, how is that going to affect the Army Corps of Engineer floodplain maps? And I'm asking that question is because that area in there that floods, the flood insurance is often high for people in that area. Will that drop their flood insurance premiums? So, so many of that is maintenance. Um, so we'll clean some of that up and improve it. I don't know that it's going to affect the floodplain area, but um, 
So it, it will get the water away. It won't prevent additional drainage damage, flooding. But I, I don't know that it'll affect the flood plains, especially with the remapping that we just had a few years ago to increase the footprint size. The ones we're talking about right now are relatively small improvements, and the kind that will really affect the flood insurance are, um, are very large, very expensive projects. Um, the kinds that we would need multiple partnerships to kind of get in and, and take care of. So we are uh, looking at those, um, but the projects we're talking about that we're working on right now and the ones immediately coming up um, are really more localized. We were not required by FEMA to do a flood study. Projects, they're all uh, talking about just kind of maintaining and improving, uh, or not even improving, just getting the dishes back to their um, uh, construction standards. So, not actually adding capacity, just doing maintenance to make sure they're back at the estimated capacity. Any questions over upcoming big projects? All right, uh, as far as our facility update, uh, we're beginning building 27 uh, renovation. So we're the design build, it's about 1.65 million. The contract's been awarded and is in design phase. This is going to be a new fleet building. So this is across the street from our current public works facility over on 10 Commercial Place. As the city is growing, we have a lot of staff all kind of packed in together. This is going to be really nice. This allows our fleet department to work on multiple vehicles and even our large fire engines uh, without having to work on them in the parking lot. Um, so it's going to be a, a big improvement and uh, this can actually open us up to be sort of a regional uh, fleet maintenance uh, uh, type program uh, to where other cities are actually helping offset our costs and paying us to kind of work on their uh, equipment. Um, we're also updating the public safety restroom. Uh, we have new renovations for that. Uh, the contract has been awarded and is currently in review. And then we have a, a renovating the Pacific Center kitchen uh, currently out for bid. Our facility maintenance budget is about $290,000. That was with the $55,000 we're going to add to it for this next budget year. <clears throat> so the next year highlights include <clears throat> a city hall counter remodel. Uh, so when you go into city hall, the court, inspections, the utility building, we're going to remodel those, court, uh, those counters. We're going to update the community, kinder, uh, community center kitchen. Uh, we're going to pair the rear fence over the animal control facility. Uh, we're going to do some upgrades to the library restroom and maintenance. Uh, fire station one sleeping area floor uh, will be replaced. Uh, we'll do some preventative maintenance on our ACE units, and we have some sort of emergency maintenance built in uh, for something that just kind of breaks the pipe busts. Uh, or um, what we've seen, especially a lot of Texas and, and through our budgets, is uh, big AC units go out. Um, you know, AC unit goes out on a recreation facility, one of those big sort of industrial type AC units that could be anywhere from $15,000 to $30,000 of repair just for that one job. The other highlight was our classification and compensation study. So the city went out, hired a firm. Uh, they did a big survey and recommendation. They looked at uh, all city uh, staff's wages and compared them to other comparable cities around the area. Uh, they came back and uh, they found that City insurance actually pays in the bottom half according to their sample. Um, and reviewing those numbers with council, uh, we're trying to get to 70 or 97% of the median over five years. So we're going to do some pay adjustments over the next five years. Even after the pay adjustment, we won't be in the top half. Uh, we'll still be sort of in the bottom half of, uh, of pay for uh, comparable cities. Um, but we're going to make strides and try to, try to get that up. Uh, this study also recommended we do an employment cost index, ECI. So sort of a, uh, similar to what we call the cost of living adjustment. Uh, it's an index that's put out. Uh, they estimated we need about 3%. Uh, we're gonna do a 1% initial effective October 1 this coming year, and then up to a quarter percent the next following years. 
Uh, so if the ECI is real high above a quarter, we won't go that high, we'll stay at the quarter, uh, but it should be at about a 2% um, um, wage increase at the, over the uh, five year period. Uh, so not quite a whole, not a, not a whole lot of adjustment, but um, some adjustment to help keep up with uh, growing employment costs. I mentioned the staffing study. So we had, at the same time we're doing the salary survey, we also had a, a firm come in and look at our workload, look at our uh, standard of service, and um, recommend um, which positions we should hire next and how many. Um, so looking at those results, uh, we hired nine positions in the current year, and then we're proposing four new positions based off the study this coming year. Uh, one's gonna be a police captain, uh, one's gonna be a school resource officer, basically a school police officer, and those are actually paid for by the school district. Uh, we have an emergency management coordinator. Uh, so while uh, you saw the fire chief Kate come up and talk about the COVID update, he is currently acting as our emergency management coordinator. Uh, we're gonna hire someone to come in take over some of those responsibilities and be a full-time job uh, going forward. And on the planning side, we're gonna have another senior planner. Uh, this person will manage that uh, comprehensive land use plan and handle all of our long range plans. Uh, so right now we have a senior planner that really works on the day-to-day -day and short-term. Uh, we really need some more long-term planning. So that's what this person will do. So overall, the general fund uh, proposed budget is uh, $37.2 million. That's an increase of $972,000, or 2.7% from our current budget. So we're going up all 2.7%. The non-personnel actually decreases 4.5%. Fewer capital purchases, and we actually had a couple of tax reimbursements that we were paying to corporations that I just fired, so we no longer have to pay them. Uh, our personnel budgets increased 6.9%. This is what we were talking about before. It has the uh, adjustment for the classification compensation study. It has an annual merit program, which allows our staff to move up in their pay scale based on their performance. Uh, it's average at 2%. Uh, we have health insurance cost increases. Uh, we have the ECI, the employment cost index we're trying to build in. And then, as I mentioned, we're adding four positions. Um, so uh, this is one of the largest personnel-based increases we've had in the city in the uh, uh, past few years. So for the final proposed budget, uh, this is where we were at. It's kind of uh, amazing. Back in 2007, uh, we were just below 15 million. And now in 2021, we proposed about 37. Uh, past few years, we've been fairly consistent with the increases overall. We look at on a per capita. So, is our budget growing faster than our population? Uh, for next year, this uh, orange line is relatively flat. So, it looks like the budget we're proposing is in line with our population growth, and generally, that's what it should be. Uh, we saw some increases here. Uh, that was for uh, a tax rate increase. We went up to 5146. Um, that was for uh, a lot of more road improvements, a lot of park improvements, a lot of facility improvements. Uh, so we made that constant decision to go up higher than the tax rate. Uh, and we grew a little bit faster than our population did uh, that year. Uh, we get about uh, a quarter of our general fund revenue from sales tax. Um, as you can see, it's volatile. Uh, it bounces around quite a bit. Um, some of it's the comptroller. Not to say it's all the state's fault, but um, all companies remit their sales taxes to the state and they turn around and give it uh, their, the city's portion out to the cities. And sometimes they get it wrong um, and they can take it away from you um, in the coming months. So we'll see uh, some months we have, some years we were down a little bit uh, recently, and some months we were up in. 17.1.1 or 13.9 percent growth. Um, we're averaging currently just under 4 percent, and next year we'll propose uh, estimate uh, 5 percent growth on our sales tax. Uh, permit revenue: uh, we get about 1.6, 1.7 uh, million dollars annually. Uh, the green is our budget; the orange is actual. Uh, these two years was when the school district did all their renovations throughout the city. Uh, we also had some big commercial. 
uh, plans come in. So we um, brought a lot of revenue above what we were expecting our firm those two years. Uh, they kind of leveled out the past couple of years. Uh, we're going to maintain. We expect that's going to uh, maintain. Uh, luckily, so far, we haven't seen any slowdown in permits due to COVID. We kind of thought we would, but that's one area that's been sort of pushing through, uh, through all this. Our franchise fees. Um, we've been very, relatively consistent. We're going to continue that trend. Uh, we thought this year that we we're going to see a decrease with some legislation that passed uh, saying we can't um, uh, charge them for uh, basically two, two charges for the same service. Um, all the uh, uh, franchisees had to do was let us know which, which service they were going to pay for, and uh, we couldn't collect on the other half. Uh, however, either we misread it or they haven't realized they can do that yet, so we're still seeing quite a bit of uh, franchise. We're not seeing that reduction, uh, so we're going to continue seeing that until uh, we get those letters saying that they're done. Pick one fee over the other. Under the other fees, uh, these are municipal court fines, these are uh, facility rentals. Uh, we've seen sort of a decrease, but we've see, started to see it level out um, this year. It's one of the areas we are going to see a little bit of decrease. Uh, facility rentals are down, uh, as an example. Uh, we're hoping those come back as, as more and more businesses um, open back up and uh, we start having less and less restrictions. Um, as far as the jump on personnel, uh, so we have been growing. You see that the green to green is one of the larger increases next year, and that was due to all the uh, uh, items that I mentioned previously. Uh, operating expenses, um, been relatively consistent. This is when we went up. Uh, we had a lot of funds to our uh, street maintenance, and building maintenance, and park maintenance, along with an increased tax rate, and that was that increase here. Uh, since then, we're relatively stable, we're keeping those expenses uh, relatively the same. Uh, capital outlay, this one is our replacement vehicles, replacement equipment, so our, our big uh, big sort of equipment. Uh, you see, this is there after, right after recession, uh, we weren't replacing a lot of our big equipment, our vehicles. Um, we were actually buying what we could, but we are actually taking out debt to replace existing vehicles and equipment. Um, Try really hard to get a replacement program in place and fund those with cash. Um, started doing that, and then we were able to, in 2018, really get that program underway. Uh, so since then, our capital replacement has a nice 10-year schedule. Our goal is to keep it relatively flat. Um, this year, we had some missing capital purchases. Uh, we placed the order in time, but the company was just out. Uh, it didn't get here until the next fiscal year, so that's why this one's a little bit higher. We ordered here, but it didn't come in until there. Um, but again, going forward, we should see this as a relatively flat um, goal of our new uh, replacement plan. Right. This is all super exciting stuff, but bear with me. We're getting, we're getting through it. Uh, the proposed budget, we do have a 26% fund balance requirement. It says 26% of our annual operating revenue needs to be in our bank account at all times sort of a safety net for natural disasters. Um, so right now we're above that 26%. And we don't want to be sitting on a whole lot of money. This is taxpayer money. We need to put it to use in a way that uh, is beneficial to the community. So choices made in this budget will reduce the fund balance to 26% over five years. Uh, so this is sort of our forecast going out. Um, we're here in 2020. We're going to take $4 million out of our reserves. We have a lot of capital projects that we went over this year. That's where that funding was coming from, in addition to some bond funds or some of our debt. Next year, we're going to take about 500000 out for some additional one-time capital projects. Um, and then going forward, uh, a couple of years, we'll take some money out. Uh, but the goal is to take this 33.9 and to turn it to 26% without going below it. Um, so we're going to ease into that over this time. We are looking long term at our city debt, uh, seeing what we can do there. Um, one of the directions from council at the retreat was to see if we can stop paying uh, debt for more routine road maintenance. Uh, you saw how expensive some of those can be. Uh, so we're looking at options to kind of move some of those uh, that money from paying debt and interest over to just paying for the maintenance we need uh, on a cash basis. Um, so we're using this, our, our long term look, uh, to try to accomplish that.
Uh, we do have another debt issuance coming up next year. Uh, we are contributing $9.4 million uh, to 1518 uh, improvements. They're gonna improve the road all the way from I-10 all the way to 78. Uh, the city's committed to 9.4 already. Uh, we have five million in voter approved bonds and the rest uh, was council passed by resolution uh, committing those funds as well. Um, so this is a big joint effort. That whole project is over $50 million, I believe now. Um, the city's putting in uh, 9.4 to help tech stop uh, with those uh, construction. And then the Bear County's actually putting in some money as well. So it's gonna be really nice when it's done. Uh, and I believe the uh, construction or the uh, contract award date is coming up next September, uh, so we heard. So hopefully it'll actually get some stuff moving up. All funds together, uh, we have presented a budget of $89.4 million. General fund that we've talked about most is 41%. Um, all the property taxes we collect, all the sales taxes are in the general fund. Uh, we do operate a water and sewer fund as well, so the utility fund. Uh, we have a regional EMS department. And then our INS, or this is our, how much we go towards the city debt, is about 8% of our overall uh, budget. Uh, water and sewer fund, we do have some upcoming projects here. Uh, we're going to do some loop line uh, improvements at Ware Skiing and Lower Skiing in Greytown and Fail. Uh, what a loop line is, it basically ties our system into a continuous loop. So let's say if a, a water line breaks at one point, the way it is right now out some of the out south in some communities, the water line breaks at one point, all of those houses lose water. So what we're doing is kind of looping it back around, tying it back into, a, into our system at least one other point. That way if one part goes down, they can still get water from uh, the other line. Uh, the, uh, we have a new elevated water storage tank over at Corbett, right by the, the middle school. Uh, that should be wrapping up, and then we'll start on a ground water storage tank. Sort of big squat uh, uh, storage tank with a lot of water. Uh, 1518, so before Textile can get in there and do their stuff, we have to move our utility lines. That's coming up uh, next year as well. Um, this is just the design portion. We'll have a construction after that. Uh, Aviation Heights water line replacement is going to kick off. Project kick off next year, and then we're going to update some North Cliff Country Club estates AC pipe, and uh, we're also adding a mainline water camera and leak detection system uh, to help reduce water loss in our in our utility system. Uh, that way, we're not losing water in the ground whenever we're pumping it in uh, from our provider. Uh, just adds cost to us and makes it uh, system more efficient that we can detect those quickly. Under our EMS fund, uh, we're planning to hire a full-time instructor. We do teach EMT classes here. Um, right now we have our contract instructors for that. We're going to hire a full-time uh, instructor for that and other classes. Uh, we're going to add two uh, <coughs> full-time paramedics and a 24-hour uh, full-time paramedic. And uh, we believe those positions will mostly be offset by uh, just reduced overtime savings. So right now, over uh, EMS has a lot of overtime. We may think you know, running a 24-hour shift or a 12-hour shift, uh, they can rack up for a lot, quite a bit of overtime. Uh, so anyway, we can do to reduce that, uh, shelf offset those, and, and get more people out, uh, working less hours, and be more efficient at it. And then our economic development. Uh, so we have improved incentives, about $3.1 million estimated to pay out next year. These are uh, already agreements that we have with companies coming in to help develop property and land or promote our commercial businesses. And then uh, remember on the road side, we said we're going to continue Tri-County construction all the way to 3009. Um, uh, the Economic Development Corporation is going to pay for that. That's about a $4 million project from, those, from that area. So I've kind of really went through that. Uh, there's a lot of material covered in there. Uh, but so those are some of the highlights. Uh, so we're putting a lot of our emphasis on uh, capital improvement plans, our big infrastructure, uh, streets, sidewalks, drainage, uh, parks, those have been the big areas. And then uh, based on the studies we've had, there's some uh, personnel adjustments we're making as well. And so th those are really the highlights that you see throughout the budget this year. Any questions over the budget?
going into the tax rate, what does that look like? So if you don't know, we have in uh, the current year $3.75 billion of taxable property in the, in the city of Schertz. Those same properties were valued at $3.78 billion this year. And then we added $120 million of brand new construction for a total value of tax value of $3.9 billion. We'll probably hit the $4 billion mark next year. So we get those values and the state comes to us and says, okay, here are your taxable values. Here are some complicated formulas to calculate some tax rates and publish. No one can understand. No one can understand. Publish these notices to your citizens. Um, and they have, they do have good reasoning behind what they're doing. Um, but they have us calculate a couple of rates. Uh, one is now called the no new revenue. This was called the effective rate. We've been to a previous meeting, but uh, now it's called the no new revenue. Uh, this one's saying, um, if we took the no new revenue, the city would get the exact same uh, property taxes income uh, that we did the previous year, um, assuming no new development. So if your house went up in value, we didn't add any new property, this no new revenue rate would go down, so your tax bill would remain the exact same. So that's what it's meant to do on a very simple finance scale. The second rate they have us calculate is called the voter approval rate. Now there was a rate called the rollback rate, now it's called the voter approval. And the voter approval rate, council can approve a tax rate above this, but it kicks it into an automatic election. So if council wanted to approve a rate above this, they, they could try, but it would go to the voters this November, and whether it's uh, approved or not. Um, before we would take basically a no new revenue rate and then add 8%, and that was the rollback rate, the council could go above it, but the citizens had to um, petition to get a vote on that rate. Now the no voter approved rate is only 3.5%, and triggers an automatic election. So those are recent changes. I'll also show you the current rate and the proposed maximum rate. So our no new revenue is 50.79. Our voter approval rate is 52.47. Our current rate is 51.46, and the proposed maximum is 51.46 that council passed on Tuesday. And that's basically 50 cents on every $100. Yes, this is. This is 51 cents, 51 and a half cents on every $100 of taxable value on your home or business. So one penny on this rate equals to about $390,000 of revenue for the city or about $24.45 annually on the average home. So you see how much we have. If we were here, if we went down a penny, it'd be $24 off the tax bill. If we went up a penny to the voter approved, it'd be an additional $24.48 on the average tax bill. Now the tax rate broken down into two pieces. One's the M&O, maintenance and operations. This goes to pay, all the revenue from this tax rate goes to pay the um, annual operations. This is the police, fire, uh, streets, all that kind of stuff to paid out here. INS is interest and sinking, and all of the tax dollars raised from this rate goes directly to pay the city's debt. Uh, overall, from the current to the maximum, almost no change. Uh, we propose to keep the tax rate pretty much the same. Just one little tick up here, one little tick down from that. So we look at your overall property tax bill. This is actually how it breaks down and which entities actually gets uh, money from your tax bill. This uh, very colorful, bright green at the bottom. I guess that's green. Maybe teal, see green. That is uh, the amount of your tax bill that goes to the city. Uh, the school district is, by and large, the largest recipient of, of property taxes. Uh, counties are in red. Uh, county roads are in black. And if you live in Bear County, you're lucky. You get uh, some community college and the university health system and can't really see it, but the San Antonio River Authority is in there as well. So you get all these extra services. Okay. So at 50.79, the no new revenue rate, 
What does that look like on the average tax bills? So 2019 tax bill was about $1,200, the city's portion only. Uh, the average home value was two, uh, 233000 Well, that rate in 2020, um, the average tax bill under that rate would be 1241 and we actually seen the average home value increase to 244000 So that increase is attributed to two things. One, overall property values have gone up. Uh, we've also seen new construction value very high as well. So some sort of the median new home value in SUC for new construction in the school district is about 299000 So new homes coming in are driving up that average as well. So if the voter approved, if we went all the way up to the voter approval rate, uh, the average tax bill would be $1282. Um, average tax bill was $82, but under the donated revenue would go up 41, so it's about a 41 increase on the average home. If we stayed at our current rate on the original proposal, uh, the average tax bill would be $1258, overall $58 average tax bill increase. We're seeing existing residents with probably see closer to about $17 annual increase. Any questions over, and this is kind of complicated, uh, if you have any questions over how the tax bills uh, calculated. Uh, we're about to publish a notice in the newspaper uh, required by the state. So we have the tax assessor collector, uh, Daryl John over at Butler Bay County. Uh, he's available to answer any questions as far as tax rate calculations, and of course, we can help out as well. Historic tax rates for the city of Shirts. Back in 2006, we dropped 43, we dropped about 40. Um, this was the year we went up on the tax rate from 49.10 to 51.46. All those, uh, all the additional income from that jump went to streets, parks, and facilities uh, to help improve our maintenance and then uh, the cancel maintenance programs. Uh, since then, we've maintained uh, at 51.46. Um, we proposed, the original proposal was to keep that at 51.46 for next year as well. Very steep. And you can see the breakdown of INS versus MO operation versus debt. Uh, yellow is the debt portion. That was sort of our all encompassing high look at some sort of the, uh, the biggest projects, the biggest items, and um, what our property taxes, tax rates proposed at, and how we kind of got to that rate. Um, so now we open up for discussion. And we have our executive, our assistant city managers here who oversee the daily operations um, for all different kind of categories. And we also have uh, representatives from sort of the uh, uh, big departments on the streets and uh, water and, and uh, other areas that are answering questions as well. So, so John Nowak is here to talk streets. Suzanne Williams can talk <laughs> sidewalks and drainage. Uh, Charles can talk facilities. Brian can talk comprehensive plan. So we have the experts here. And if you would like, uh, um, if you stay a respectable distance of six feet away with your mask, you can talk to them after um, the event's over or uh, shoot them an email. Of course, they'll uh, be available to you as, as well. Yeah, this is really for the community to help answer questions. Uh, I know we put out a 300 page document. Uh, I help walk you through it and figure out what else is in it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Ruth. Go ahead. Okay. The, the water item that was mentioned in the paper this week in the Herald, does that have anything to do with our budget? The, the increase of the water that's supposed to be because our water, we're dangerously close to not having enough? Okay, so. Uh, I didn't read the article yet, I'm sorry, but what we're talking about is conservation. Really. That doesn't have any impact on what's going on here um, at all. That's, that's not part of that. But we're, all, we're, all we're trying to say is that we want folks to conserve and to be aware that you know, water is not an endless you know, resource. But we're not dangerously, we're not low on water, we're, we're not getting ready to run out of water, nothing like that. But all we're saying is, uh, we want to conserve water because it is possible if we produce enough water in our in our water system, um, you know, and, and uh, we we sort of um, are outstripping our 
allocation, because we have an allocation for production, you know, we could go on restrictions. Now, historically, Schertz has never been on water restrictions like San Antonio or the Braunfels or many of the other communities, because we just, um, we just always had plenty of water. But uh, we just, all we're saying is um, be wise and conserve. And that's, that's the best thing we can do right now. So that, does that help? But that, none of those, none of that was reflected in the, in the budget. Okay, I understand that part, that it's not going to cost us anymore. But what I didn't understand, when they said that, that we were close to not having enough water, I thought, I thought it meant that when we got the pipeline to the other aquifer, was it Gonzales? Carrizo. Carrizo, okay. That we were selling space in there to San Antonio. We were, we are. Yeah, we are. So, was that part of our income that was in this budget? Uh, no, that's really, uh, that goes to the SSLGC. You wanna to talk to that, Charles? Yes, ma'am. So, as, as you know, when we put in the water treatment plant, we take the water, we take the water from the Greaser Aquifer, we bring it through, we share that with the city, we get about eight, a little over eight million gallons per day uh, through that system. We also have about four million gallons available to us from the Edwards Aquifer, from our own wells, the city of Shirt Wells, Shirt's Wells. So combined, we have about 13 to 14 million gallons that we can resource. Right for the last, uh, in July, during the heat spell, we were at about 9 million gallons. So we have exceeded our allocation from the SSLGC well production, but we have the Edwards Aquifer. So what we're trying to say is we want to conserve until we get the parallel pipeline, which is a second project we're working on, to bring additional water from the Carrizo Aquifer that's about two years out. Once that's in place, we'll get we'll have more than enough water for until 2045 or something uh, in projections. So we have plenty of water, as, the, as Dr. Brown said. We have reserve water if we need it. But what we're seeing currently with the growth of the city and the consumption based on the extremely high temperatures that we're seeing is we have historical consumption rates. Uh, we had one time last year, this year we've had three days equitable to that. We just have lots of folks using lots of water. We have beautiful green yards, uh, unlike some of our sister cities to the south of us. Um, we just want to start educating in conservation. Is that well, it's a long, long answer, but I'm happy to talk to you after. It's smarter to conserve now, and you know, we, we, we all, I think, need to be aware of that, that um, conservationists, we just, we just you know, really shouldn't be using as much water as we want. I think there's no consequence to that ever. Um, there, there are possible consequences to it, but we're not getting ready to run out of water, so I'm gonna, I'll read that article, and see what, see what they said. I know I, blew through, uh, I really blew through that presentation. Um, that's not my favorite part. I really like interacting with folks and answering questions. And, uh, you want to go over it again? I can go over it again. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps there's more questions buried in there that if I go back through it, we'll go up. Next time, go through it. Okay. Well, we do appreciate uh, you all being here. Thank you so much. I mean, I think it shows the good citizenship to come and uh, to participate in our process. And, uh, you know, see what uh, we have, and um, so we, we definitely appreciate that. I also want to say for those who may be watching and had an opportunity to watch, and you have questions, please uh, email those questions to us, to the city, and uh, we'll be happy to answer those questions or, or take your, your comments into consideration as we finalize our budget. So I, I did want to say that. So, Mayor, do you have any final remarks or anything? I'll just final remarks, thank you. No, thank you, Mr. Uh, Walter. So, you know, the budget, it's, it's, it's our plan for this coming year. That's what it is, everything that we're, we're going to be working on and, of course, supporting our staff. Uh, I appreciate you all coming out here. And like Dr. Brown said, if you have any questions, please let us know. I, I, put, I like the slide where it showed the, uh, what we did last year, it, you know, where your money was spent. And, you know, and those are our plans with this budget. 
the roads we're going to fix, uh, the, the drainage, uh, and of course, like I said, taking, up, taking care of our personnel, our staff. But I appreciate you all coming out, and I appreciate our staff for everything they do. Thank you. We appreciate you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Good job, man.